sizes up to and including the length of a sword. Obviously something like that is more likely to be used as a weapon. <laughs> we have certain warriors who refuse to fight each other. <laughs> and he's scared of her. Right, <laughs> choose which one you're going to take on. <laughs> this guy keeps changing his weaponry or his... It's the tools of his trade. <laughs> hey, he's picked the wrong one. <laughs> As you can see, it can be quite quick fighting. The use of the shield obviously gives you some advantage, but obviously it's shield against shield. And you make sure he stays down. Alright, a family squabble here. <laughs> Would you like to announce yourselves? <laughs> no, he wouldn't. Right, fair enough. Carry on. <laughs> now, I won't explain who they are because we have a thing known as the curse of the PA. You name a warrior and they almost immediately die. <laughs> and we have a champion with the knife, ladies and gentlemen. Right, I'll call upon the warriors. <laughs> Give him a kiss to bring him to life, yes. Warriors arise. Now, obviously, a knife is very much a close-in weapon. You are literally hand to hand with your opponent. So, how do you get an advantage? You stick your knife on the end of the stick. And that leads us to the spear. You will see two types of spear here. A long spear, which is used with two hands. And a shorter spear, which can also be thrown, which is used with one hand while you have a shield in your other hand. Or a sword on the stick in some cases. Yeah, it's just been pointed out that our, the gentleman there with the pink sleeves needs a long weapon because he's only a short warrior. <laughs> he doesn't need a long weapon. Carry on, warriors. Now you'll see a lot of fencing with these spears. As well as using, uh, using the spear offensively, you have to use it. If you're using a two-handed spear, you have to use it to defend yourself. Now the advantage of a spear is it gives you reach. But if you're fighting against a spearman, you actually have the situation that if you can get past that, the head on the, sh on the spear, you then have to uh, getting in very close to your opponent and you can kill him. Now remember I said earlier about a knife not having a lot of metal in it. A spear has roughly the same amount of metal. So therefore it is relatively cheap. Anything made of metal is expensive in the Viking Age. The more metal in it, the more work involved in making it, the more expensive it is. Now, because a spear is relatively inexpensive, 
and it has a good reach, it is the most common weapon at that time. Mostly it will be used in a shield wall just for thrusting against your opponent. You will be thrusting against your opponent's head or his feet. Logically, we tend to ban headshots for a, from safety point of view. But... And I don't know whether you noticed, but those two warriors, the last two warriors, were both left-handers. Okay. Now, the two weapons you've seen so far have, all, have both had other uses. You've had the knife, which you use for eating. The spear can be used for hunting, especially a long one, which we, might well be used for hunting boar. Any animal that's not going to run away with you can be hunted with a spear. Now, back in the Viking Age, you didn't have gas fires, you didn't have electric fires, you didn't have coal fires. What you had was wood fires. So every household would have at least one axe. Hand axes used for chopping your wood. Most people taking part in a battle would be called in, might be provided with weapons, but they would take what they could with them, even if it was only a club. Now a hand axe is a handy weapon. As you will see with these warriors, the axes vary in length. And you don't just necessarily chop your way through your opponent's shield although it's one way of getting at him. An axe, because the head is at an angle, can be used for hooking your opponent's shield. Or hooking your opponent. You could hook it behind his knee and bring him down, for example. An axe has a little bit more metal in it than uh, a knife would have. We don't have any on the field at the moment, but we have had warriors in the society who actually fought with two axes, no shield. It's like fighting a, a couple of small windmills. An axe can be a very quick weapon. Down to three. Now it's sometimes said that a warrior in chainmail is slowed down slightly. A warrior who's wearing next to nothing, on the other hand, is quite quick on his feet. <laughs> Obviously not fast enough. And again, you make sure he stays down. There are situations where somebody might be badly wounded, go down and then realise they weren't quite as badly wounded as they thought. The initial shock wears off, they get back to their feet. You don't want somebody coming up behind you after you think ki you've killed them. So you make sure he's down and stays down. Now left-hander against a right-hander. The left-hander generally has a slight advantage because the warrior he's fighting is used to fighting right-handed warriors. Although if you get two left-handed warriors, they're both at a disadvantage. And if you're careful, you can actually hook your opponent's weapon drag it out of his hand which we often try to do fighting with a fighting with an axe 